from Sonny's Blues. All I know about music is that not many people ever really hear it. And even then, on the rare occasions when something opens up within and the music enters, what we mainly hear or hear corroborated are personal, private, vanishing evocations. But the man who creates the music is hearing something else, is dealing with the roar from the void and the imposing order on it as it hits the air. What is evoked in him, then, is of another order more terrible because it has no words, and triumphant, too, for that same reason. And his triumph, when he triumphs, is ours. I just watched Sonny's face. His face was troubled. He was working hard, but he wasn't with it, and I had the feeling that, in a way, everyone on the bandstand was waiting for him, both waiting for him and pushing him along. But as I began to watch Creole, I realized that it was Creole who held them all back. He had them on a short rein, up there, keeping the beat with his whole body, wailing on the fiddle. With his eyes half closed, he was listening to everything, but he was listening to Sonny. He was having a dialogue with Sonny. He wanted Sonny to leave the shoreline and strike out for the deep water. He was Sonny's witness that deep water and drowning were not the same thing. He had been there and he knew, and he wanted Sonny to know. He was waiting for Sonny to do things on the keys which would let Creole know that Sonny was in the water. And while Creole listened, Sonny moved deep within, exactly like someone in torment. I had never before thought of how awful the relationship must be between the musician and his instrument. He has to fill it, this instrument, with the breath of life his own. He has to make it do what he wants to, to do. And a piano is just a piano. It's made out of so much wood and wires and little hammers and big ones and ivory. While there's only so much you can do with it, the only way to find this out is to try, to try and make it do everything. And Sonny hadn't been near a piano for over a year, and he wasn't on much better terms with his life, not the life that stretched before him now. He and the piano stammered, started one way, got scared, stopped, started another way, panicked, marked time, started again, then seemed to have found a direction, panicked again, got stuck, and the face I saw on Sonny I had never seen before. Everything had been burnt out of it, and at the same time things were usually hidden were being burned in by the fire and the fury of the battle which was occurring in him up there. Yet watching Creole's face as they neared the end of the first set, I had the feeling that something had happened, something I hadn't heard. Then they finished. There was scattered applause, and then, without an instant's warning, Creole started into something else. It was almost sardonic. It was, am I blue? And, as though he commanded, Sunday began to play. Something began to happen, and Creole let out the reins. The dry, low, black man said something on the drums. Creole answered, and the drums talked back. Then the drum insisted, sweet and high, s slightly detached perhaps, and Creole listened, commenting now and then, dry and driving, beautiful and calm and old. And then they all came together, and Sonny was part of the family again, and I could tell f this from his face. He seemed to have found, right there beneath his fingers, a damn brand new piano. It seemed that he couldn't get over it, and then for a while, just being happy with Sonny, they seemed to be agreeing with him that brand new pianos certainly were a gas. Then Creole stepped forward to remind them that when they were, what they were playing was the blues, and he hit something in all of them. He hit something in me, myself, and the music tightened and deepened. Apprehension began to beat the air. Creole began to tell us what the blues were all about. They were not about anything very new. He and his boys up there were keeping it new at the risk of ruin, destruction, madness, and death, in order to find new ways to make us listen. For while the tale of how we suffer, and how we are delighted, and how we may triumph is never new, it always must be heard. There isn't any other tale to tell. It's the only light we've got in all this darkness. 
James Baldwin. <laughs>